Hello, my name is Steve Ablin, and today I'm going to be talking about the satellite simulation program I developed using MATLAB and Simulink. Two years ago, when I was taking the orbital mechanics course, there were many problems in the homework where you were given an initial orbit condition, and at some time later you wanted to know where the satellite was. The problem isn't too hard to solve, and from the equations you end up deriving the orbital parameters that would allow you to sketch out what the orbit looks like. But being an engineer, not an artist, I decided that maybe a little MATLABing was in order. In the beginning, I started writing basic M files that would allow me to not only do my homework easier, but would allow me to propagate the orbit for any amount of time and visually see it. And maybe for a normal person that had been good enough, but I wanted to see how realistic I could make it. So I continued to add more and more to it until I felt satisfied. But what I came to realize was there were so many awesome things that I could add to that that I could spend the next 10 years working on this. So what I decided to do was to take what I had already written and port it into Simulink and allow others to add their own research interests into it, which I thought made a very interesting and powerful program. Take, for instance, maybe an electrical engineer would want to add a link budget block set to see how well a radio would work for a given ground station, or maybe he or she would want to see how long a communication window would be for their, their, ground, their ground station for some orbit. This is just one possibility of using the program. But I could see a lot of interest in maybe doing attitude control stuff or another, on a different scope, maybe how an orbit degrades over an extended period of time. And yes, all these applications could possibly be done in AGI's SDK, but SDK costs tens of thousands of dollars, and maybe this would be for a student project where they don't have the funding to get the program, or maybe they're just more familiar with MATLAB and Simulink and don't want to learn a new program. So that's kind of one of the motivation behind the program. And now I'm going to be kind of going over the actual program itself, which, as you can see here, I've kind of separated into different blocks. Uh, there's six different blocks as it, as it is right now, and they're all interconnected with go to and from blocks, which kind of makes it look a little nicer. The first thing I'm going to talk about is the orbital elements. As I stated, um, to run the program, you need to put an initial R and V vector. Um, this could possibly change. Maybe you have a two line element. Um, so this thing could be set, changed a little bit. Um, and from that, I'm using uh, embedded MATLAB functions, so which allows me to write code instead of having extended amount of simulink blocks. And from the orbital elements, uh, the next part I'm going to talk about is the time calculations, which um, is another input that's needed, which you're putting in a month, day, and year in the universal time. And from this, this goes into the, the simulation so this was where it, it'll kind of change the rotation or the placement of the Earth uh, with respect to the given time. The next thing I'll talk about is uh, calculating the position data of, of, the, of the satellite. Um, so here it goes through a couple of different steps. You start with calculating the mean anomaly, and from here you go into the Kepler's equation where uh, you solve for the eccentric anomaly and this allows you to update the true anomaly for a given amount of time, which then we are then able to calculate the position data. Uh, one of the things I just recently added was the rate changes, rate changes of the right ascension node and the argument of perigee, which are two of like the perturbations that would degrade the orbit over for a given amount of time. Um, the next thing I'm going to talk about is the attitude propagator. Um, this is one of the areas which I don't have a lot of research into, um, so what I did was I just simply added uh, a couple Euler angle rates which change, that are just propagated over time. So this is one area that someone could possibly come in and add their own stuff. Um, from here, uh, you are able to calculate the actual Earth satellite sim and ground track sim. And from here you can see that it takes in the position data and the ad attitude data, and the this this sizing parameter is just allows you to change how big the satellite's going to be in the program, which is what I'm going to talk about now. Um, here's kind of just the basic uh, satellite that I developed. Um, two things that I added to this that could make it a possible cool reach, research interest is I added a little block on top of the satellite, which is supposed to maybe represent a, a radio or a different, uh, different component of the satellite, which you're interested in. And possibly you want to know w at what time this this face is facing the the Earth and how it its position with your ground ground station. 
Um, the next thing that I added was I added a, a color, t color parameter to the satellite, which maybe you were interested in looking at the torque coils or some different uh, way of controlling the attitude of your satellite. So this would allow you to uh, change the colors of the sides of the sat satellite when the torque coil was turned on. And so from the, all that stuff, you're able to calculate and propagate the orbit. So here's kind of what it looks like. And as I said, I put in an initial R and V vector for some given time, and I'm able to s simulate what the motion of the satellite would look like. Uh, the yellow is just supposed to represent the overhead position of the satellite. Nice Minoia orbit. And then after that's done calculating, it does the nice ground track, which you can see here it starts at the same, ends at the same point, and it just does a nice Minoia orbit. Okay, that's all I have for you today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed the, the Simulink model I created, and hopefully I'll be putting it up on the user community soon so other people can start adding. All right, thank you for watching.